Today we're going to be talking about why strength exercises need to take time and how long is that time and why can that help in Achilles tendinopathy and how long can we expect to be doing those exercises before we notice a difference. I'm Ali, I'm one of the physios from treatmyachilles.com. We're an online virtual physiotherapy service offering assessment and treatment to all kinds of Achilles problems. If you would like to find out a little bit more about our service or book an appointment, please have a look at the information below. If you have seen any of our other videos about Achilles tendinopathy, or if you have done any other research yourself or seen practitioners about it, you'll know that the first treatment or the treatment of choice for an Achilles tendinopathy is strengthening exercises. These strengthening exercises can come in a variety of different types and we've got lots of different videos describing those. They can be ones where you just raise and hold, there can be calf raises, there can be using gym equipment, you could be doing it on two foot, one foot, off a step or adding weight. The only thing in common with the research about these exercises is that it needs to be progressively getting more difficult over time. So whatever you start with, and I would suggest that you see a practitioner that can assess your condition and where you are with your signs and your symptoms, and also where you are with strength and activity levels, find out what activity and what exercises can suit your Achilles at this moment. And then over the next few weeks to months, they can guide you and you can use your own logic to work out how to progress those exercises. It's the progression that is the most important thing alongside consistency and frequency. And that's what helps increase the robustness and strength of the calf muscles and then in turn the Achilles tendon. And that then gives you the ability to go back to the activities that you wanted to do that you may not be able to do now and can also help decrease your symptoms or get rid of them completely. So one of the most common questions we get is, well, how long do we need to be doing those activities? And we know from strength evidence base that it's going to take quite a significant number of weeks and months to build strength. Even if we were completely uninjured with no problems whatsoever and we went to see a personal trainer or started to do some work where we're lifting weights in a gym, we wouldn't be expecting to suddenly be strong overnight or within a few weeks. This video is going to talk about why that might be, how strength adaptations work, how that applies to an Achilles tendinopathy, and how long can we expect before we see results? If you or I were to go and do a strength um, exercise programme or just go and start doing some work and working out in a gym, we would start with some strength exercises and we would do that maybe with weight, maybe without, and maybe on a mat, maybe in a chair. It doesn't matter, but the principles are the same. We would start doing that exercise and by the time we have finished those numbers of sets and reps that we've been given to do, we should be feeling tired or fatigued. And what we mean by that is that you might feel that you can't do any more repetitions, even if you were asked to, or one or two you could do, but that was about it. You're starting to lose the quality that you were doing before. So with an example of a calf raise going up onto your tiptoes, you might find rather than it being a smooth movement, it's starting to be a little bit less controlled or you may be starting to lose some height. You could feel the muscle that you're working. So when we're talking about an Achilles, that would be in the calf muscle and it might feel quite burny, like it's been used and so on. They're the signs that your muscle is fatiguing or beginning to get to failure. When that happens, we're sending a message to our body and we're also changing things within the structure of the cells within that muscle and tendon. So the changes within that muscle and tendon is microscopic damage. And this is really normal and really healthy in how we grow and get stronger. What happens then is our body starts to repair those cells and as it's repairing those cells, they become bigger. This then triggers other cells around the outside to start to grow and make our muscle fibres larger in size and therefore stronger and more able to cope with things. 
if we don't get to that point of fatigue or failure, we're not sending our message to our body to say, grow more muscle tissue. We're just staying in our comfort zone. And that comfort zone means that we're not really gonna get stronger, but we're also probably not gonna get weaker. And if we were to stop doing those strength exercises altogether, then we would start to become weaker and the muscle size would become less. So depending on the activity that you do and how much you've loaded that muscle and how fatigued you've got, depends on the amount of micro damage that's there. And therefore that takes time to repair. It might take a day, it might take a few days. And we can see by the picture of our super compensation cycle that you do have a baseline of strength, then you do your activity and then you dip below that as it repairs and then you grow and get stronger. And if we do that on a regular basis, our muscles get stronger again and stronger again. And that's when we can start to do more. When we're looking at an Achilles tendinopathy, we know that when we have changes and you can see some of our previous videos about why we might have changes in our tissue, why we have lumps and bumps, what happens when we have a tendinopathy, what we're noticing there is that we have a change in some of the fibres of our collagen inside our tendon. It's really important to remember that's only a small amount of the fibres and a large amount are healthy and strong. And it's those fibres that we're getting stronger by doing the exercise. If we then create that strength over time, we can start to then do more and do more and get back to our activity. So how long does this all take? Well, if we just went to the gym again uninjured with no pain or any injury signs and symptoms to consider, we'd be looking at somewhere around 8 to 12 weeks before we start noticing a good strength difference. Now less than that, so even within the first month, we start noticing we could probably do a bit more and we might be able to manage doing those exercises and start to make them a little bit more difficult. But it's going to take those times before we start to notice, oh my gosh, look, my muscle looks stronger, or I can really do a lot more. And it tends to be that with hand in hand, the strengthening exercises, that's when we're also reducing in our average symptoms that we're getting. This goes alongside load management when we're looking at Achilles tendinopathy, and we, that's called relative rest. And we also have lots of videos on those. All of the links to these other videos can be found below. For the first few weeks of our exercise regime, the changes are more neurological. They're more about how we start to fire our muscles, how we start to recruit more of our muscle. And that's when we start the strengthening process. So we wouldn't see a change in the size or the shape necessarily during that time either. It's knowing that we need to go through that cycle quite consistently. Sometimes we're giving people exercises to do on a daily basis and sometimes if they're more difficult, for example, if you're holding heavy weight and doing these, we need that rest period. This will all depend on you as an individual and what your practitioner has assessed and it should be done on a different basis. What's important to note is when we get to a good level of those exercises or we're pushing the boundaries of those exercises, it's also necessary to have some rest days. So if we again look at that supercompensation cycle, we know we go up and then we go down before we grow more muscle. And it's that down phase where we need to have time off from activity that would be working those muscles again. So calf exercises in this instance, but also activity that might activate that calf. So pushing off, running, jumping, those sorts of movements. If we are to have that time off, that's where our body's more effective at uh, making these adaptations and changes and we're better at getting stronger. If we were to ignore that, then what can be happening is that we're just not getting as strong as efficiently or effectively, or indeed we could be overlapping those cycles so much that we might end up with aches and pains or problems elsewhere. So when we're talking about progressing exercises, other videos we've done and things you may have read are talking about trying to get our exercise up to a level where we may be adding weight to that. Again, this might not be everybody's need, but it tends to go hand in hand with this process. 
we're using evidence base for that and there are some systematic reviews out there that show the type of exercise that we should be able to do that corresponds to less than running, walking and running again and you can see that from the table. When we're looking at things like that, it's all about what weight we are compared to the amount of weight we're holding to do those exercises. And that's your body weight percentage. Now, we might be able to start our rehab program and within week one or two, start whacking those weights up. And we could be whacking those weights up quite quickly. But is that going to be everything that we need to do when we're looking at Achilles rehab? No, we need the time and the consistency at doing these exercises to help increase our strength so we get there in the end. This could be even six months, it could be even up to a year, it depends on your goals, it depends on how long you've had this problem and again that's why this needs to be prescribed to you as an individual, not a carbon cut and copy of exercises that we give to everyone with an Achilles tendinopathy. Therefore, the take home with this is that it's consistent, it's frequent, it's individualised to you as a person and it takes time. It takes weeks to months to build that muscle tissue and therefore reduce your symptoms. So be patient with it.